I don't get, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not with the, the knives and all that. I'm not really too much with that. But to protect myself, I'd have to. I understand. Okay. I had to protect myself, you know, and he was a big boy. I don't know if y'all got the pictures. He was a big boy. Okay, well, um, for myself, that that's all my questions, and then I'll pass it to my. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> What is going on everybody? Welcome to Prison Audio. My name is Mike and in this video we are taking a look at another pro board hearing. Uh, this time we are in the state of Louisiana. This pro board hearing originally happened on April the 23rd of 2024 and it is the case of Brant and Selmy. He is inmate number 716-788. So I'll give you a little bit of background before we actually jump into the pro board hearing. Um, apparently in February 17th of 2015, um, him and a friend picked up two juveniles from Lafayette and drove them to a residence in Vermilion Parish where the juveniles were allegedly given liquor, marijuana, and were assaulted. So, um, the interesting thing about this case is that this guy was not actually, so he, he was originally charged, um, with the uh, assault, but I believe he was convicted of indecent behavior with a juvenile. And the reason he was apparently is because the girl in this case um, came to court and testified that it was consensual. Um, so that's kind of strange that he was 17 at the time. She was 15 at the time, um, both teenagers. But um, obviously, we, we, you know, we don't know the entire story of what happened that night, um, whether it was consensual or not, but apparently they are both saying that it was consensual. Um, so it seems strange that he was given, he was given, uh, 14 years for it. So we're going to have to wait and see what the pro board has to ask him about that. And, um, the other interesting thing that came up in regards to this case was happened in, uh, 2017 in which he was charged um, with a stabbing in the prison. So we are gonna see if the pro board asks him about that. And yeah, we are gonna see what happens today, whether Louisiana decides to grant him parole, uh, whether they decide to deny him parole. So stick around until the end of the video, I will come back with some comments and we will see you then. All right, good morning. The Committee on Parole is reconvening. We're at Washita Correctional Center on Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024. It's 10 16 a.m. I'd like for the officer there at Washita to please introduce yourself for the record. Good morning, Deputy Marshall. Thank you so much for accommodating us again this morning, Mr. Marshall. And we have, uh, I'd like to ask the offender, please introduce yourself. Tell us your name and DOC number. Uh, Brent Anselmi, 716-788. Yes, sir, Mr. Anselmi. And let me introduce the panel to you. My name is Cheryl Renanza. Mrs. Stapleton is seated to my left. Mr. Freeman is seated to my right. I want to acknowledge that we also have some guests that are joining us. We have uh, your mother, Ms. Broussard, and your mm -hmm. cousin, Jordan. Uh, both of whom will be speaking on your behalf. And we also have your sister, Britlin, who is uh, watching, but she will not be speaking this morning. So yes. I'll read some identifying information into the record, uh, after which <clears throat> I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Stapleton. Your case has been assigned to her. She'll take the lead on the interview. Once we are done with our questions, we'll hear from the folks who vindicated they want to speak, and then you'll be allowed to make a statement at the end. Yes, ma'am. So, Mr. Anselmi, you are classified as a second felony offender. You're currently serving a 14-year sentence. You were sentenced um, in uh, November 14, 2016 for aggravated battery, indecent behavior with a juvenile. Then you have another sentencing date, September 25th, 2018, aggravated second-degree battery. It's those sentences are running consecutively, so it is a 14 year sentence. Parole eligibility date has passed. That was October 8, 23. Your good time date is September 24, 2027. Does all that sound correct? 
Yes, ma'am. All right. Would you answer, Mrs. Stapleton? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I see that. Uh, well, good morning. And, good morning. Uh, I see that on the first charge that happened in 2015. And yes, of course, I read that it was a it was actually a scam. It was a Facebook scam. And y'all went to uh, the person's house. Can you tell me something about that? That particular charge? Well, uh, the it was a scam at first, like everything, you know, it was it was. I guess you could say teenagers being teenagers, but I really got set up on the whole ordeal. But in the end, they they got me with indecent behavior with a juvenile because I was 17 and she was 15. But it was it was just, I guess you could say teenagers being teenagers, man. I mean. Okay, we, so that's the juvenile rape. You were 17 and she was 15 when that happened? Yes, ma'am. That's that's what the indecent behavior with a juvenile came in at. Were y'all boyfriend and girlfriend? I mean, we were seeing each other for uh, some months. We never identified each other as boyfriend and girlfriend, but we had been seeing each other for months. Was it consensual? Are you saying it was consensual? Yes, ma'am. That's that's how I got indecent behavior with a juvenile because she had came to court and let the judge know that it was consensual. Her mom was trying to push the issue. Her mother was pushing the issue on a dodge. Okay. Can you tell me about the Facebook issue? The one that you had a victim and it was a Facebook situation. You uh, went to the house and then you were charged. Um, oh, the aggravated, the aggravated battery? Do you remember the one in 2015 that y'all went and you stole $8 from the person, Mr. Lancaster? Yes, ma'am. Um, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't a more of a scam. It wasn't really about the money. Uh, the person that did something to my cousin, which he, he took some pictures out of my cousin's phone and uh, some naked pictures at that and sent it to the whole family. And I mean, it was really for us to really beat him up, but it ended up, we ended up getting his money instead. I was young. I didn't really couldn't think at the time, honestly. I was young and dumb. Uh, you? Now I've, I've been in jail nine years. I done changed a whole lot. I done, you know, I, I if I could speak to him right now, I apologize. And if I could take it back, I would, but I, uh, unfortunately I can't. And, you know, I've learned from my mistakes and I'm just ready for my second chance to be able to, you know, go out there. I came to jail when I was 17. I haven't been home ever since. I was oh, 17 when you went to South Emma. That's your first, that's your first offense I see right. here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. 17. Now. He did release a statement. I, I'm not reading the whole thing, but he said it was okay to, to say it. He, uh, one of the conditions that he had, if you were to be uh, released, would be that uh, there would be no contact. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, ma I mean, if you wanted to write an accountability letter or something like that. that he I most definitely would love to. Honestly, I would love to. And apologize for, you know, my wrongs, honestly. All right, I think that would be a good thing for you to do. I, I see here that you've attended a lot of programs. One yes, of the things he asked if you attended was an anger management program. Yes, you, you yes ma'am, I did. Yes, ma'am. In 2000, and I think 18, I, I uh, graduated anger management. That's very good. And then I see that you attended sex offenders, one, two, three, and four. Yes, ma'am. Um, and you say that you were young and that y'all were both young when that happened. Right. Okay. Right. And can you tell me something else about your programs? You uh, I, I'm certified as a, I'm certified in CPR. I'm certified uh, forklift, NCCR. I'm certified in micrometer. I have my high set. I just took my high set a month ago, I think. I got my high set. Um, I, think that's, I think that's all my classes. I think that's all my classes. One more question I, I, I have for you about your offenses. Uh, 2017 was an aggravated battery in second degree in prison. Right. And there was a video that showed you to be the aggressor. Can you explain what happened there? Well, and being incarcerated, you know, like it's it's a lot of it's basically a, a respect thing. And, you know, I mean, I don't mean to play the race card or nothing, but as a young white boy in, in jail, like it's hard. I'm going to be honest with you. It's hard. And he was jacking off in the shower while looking at me, and that's a big old no-no. And if I let him get away with it, then everybody's gonna feel like they can do it, you know? And that's another one I really, if I could take it back, 
I promise you it would have never happened. If I can honestly go back and I'll write him a, a accountability letter and everything, like if I can go back, I honestly would apologize to every one of my victims, honestly. Because like I said, that case too, I was still young. I, I mean, honestly, it was a respect thing with the whole situation, the whole scenario. It was a respect thing. And it just happened how it happened. And I regret it. I honestly do. I regret it a lot. See something. It's a miracle he didn't die. He was stabbed yes, in yes, his head and his torso. I mean, that could have been a murder. Yes, so that's are. more than you got to respect me. I can see hitting somebody in the jaw and say, don't do this to me. Right. But it got somebody. But then, well, well, yeah. I don't mean to cut you off, but see what they didn't put in the report is he also had a weapon. He just oh. didn't hit me with it. Yeah, he didn't hit me with it. He also had a weapon though. He just didn't get a chance to hit me with his weapon. I don't get. I don't. I don't. I'm not with the the knives and all that. I'm not really too much with that. But to protect myself, I'd have to. I understand. Okay. I had to protect myself, you know. And he was a big boy. I don't know if y'all got the pictures. He was a big boy. Hey, well, uh, for myself, that that's all my questions, and then I'll pass it to my. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Trent Sally, let me advise you that there is opposition by the sentencing judge, by the sheriff in Washington Parish, the police chief in Monroe, uh, and West Monroe are all opposed to an early release for you. Ma'am, I'm I'm. It's, I, I'm just letting yeah, you know. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You knew about it, but you need to be aware of it. Right. So what what is it? You said you've been in jail nine years. What do you, yes, you have a job? Yes, ma'am. My Jordan Trump actually has me a job. My cousin that's on here right now, he has me a job. What do you do in prison? I haven't had a job. I, uh my father was trying to get me shipped down south to uh be on a road crew as a weed eater and lawnmower, you know, doing that. But it never got it gave me a job. It's hard to get a job in jail. Like you have to honestly tell on something to get a job. And yeah. I'm not... you never asked for a job. Yes, ma'am. I wrote plenty of uh requests in a lot of facilities that I've been in. You were in work release at one point in time. What happened there? I've never been to work release, ma'am. Change Bahoa Parish? Yes, ma'am, but I, I wasn't in the work release program. It says you were, but I guess No. I was never eligible for work release beside my last four years. Andrew Poet Parish Jail and, and Transitional Work Program, 2019. Uh, I wasn't even eligible for parole then, ma'am. I mean, uh, for work release. Well, let me ask the officer there, uh, Deputy Marshall, is there anything you can tell us about Mr. Anselmi? Uh, he's been with us a few times since 2017. He's never had an incident or write up while here. And we would like to put him to work, but OCC policy is due to the aggravated nature of his charges. He isn't qualified or isn't opportunity to work here, even though we'd like to, but that's sheriff's orders. So, uh, but no, since he's been here with us, he's been a model inmate for us. All right, good to hear. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll hear from the folks that want to uh, speak on your behalf. First, we'd like to hear from your mother, Ms. Broussard. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Broussard, what would you like us to know? Your microphone's on mute. We can't hear you. Unmute your mic, please. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I just think Brent, he, he's, he's, not, he's a great kid. He really is. He's had some misfortune. Some some unfortunate incidents, but he's a great kid. He has a job waiting on him. He has a residence waiting on him, and he has a whole community waiting on him. We just want him to come home. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We appreciate you joining us this morning. And uh, uh, Jordan Jordan Traha, we'd like to hear from you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, pretty much what I what I wanted to say is um, being in contact with him from the beginning. Uh, he it was rough, you know, the first couple of years, but the past, uh, I can say like four years, he has grown a lot. Uh, I can call myself somewhat of a mentor for him. Um, I just really wanted to come join the meeting to show my support, uh, let you guys know that he does have a job waiting 
Uh, I have been running my own company for about three and a half, four years, and I would love to have him by my side. Um, as soon as he does get an opportunity to be released, um, I'll be there for him to kind of help him get back into the swing of things with society, uh, getting him on the right track, uh, maybe potentially opening up his own business. Okay, thank you, sir, for joining us this morning. I just have one more question, uh, Mr. Anselmi. You have a loss of good time in March of 2021. What was that for? A phone. That's why you were at, when you were at Riverbend? Yes, ma'am. That was the contract. Is that your last write-up? Yes, ma'am. Did you have a problem with drugs, alcohol when you was on the street? Yes, sir. Have you taken uh, any classes for that? I was in substance abuse, but they shipped me from, um, I think it was, I want to say Caldwell. I was in substance abuse, but they shipped me before I could finish it. Do you think you need substance abuse treatment? I haven't done drugs in over four years, I think, sir. I think it's four years. I haven't done any drugs. Right, but they, they can come back to haunt you, you know. Right, that. once an addict, always an addict, most definitely, but. I want to hear that. Okay. No. Anything you want to say to us before we go? Yes, ma'am. I would just, I, I'd honestly just love a second chance. Like I said, you know, I've called my, I'm, I'm a second time offender, but both of my offenders, I've only been in jail one time my entire life. This is the first time, and I promise you it's going to be the last I just need my second chance so I can come show my family. My mom needs me very bad. I just would love for my second chance, please. All right. Uh, can we have a motion for executive session by Mrs. Stapleton. Second. Second by Mr. Freeman. Can you do the roll call, please? Chair Ornowski? Yes. Steve Freeman? Yes. Uh, Stapleton? Yes, Mr. Anselmi, uh, we have voted we will be in executive session for just a few moments to discuss confidential matters. Just stand by. We'll be right back. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, Mr. Anselmi, we are back in regular session. It's 1035 and we are ready to vote and Mrs. Stapleton will be voting first. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Anselmi, my vote is to grant you parole today, and I'll have a special condition of that you attend Thinking for Change. And uh, I see your mother on Zoom, what well, it's like to be a mother. So, you know, and I know that your cousin has something waiting for you. So I'm, glad, I'm so happy you have good family support. And I, I pray with them that from this day forward, your life is different and improved than that you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. All right, Mr. Freeman. Okay, uh, Mr. Anselmi, uh, my vote is also going to be grant conditional upon you completing that class. Uh, you have no contact whatsoever with any of the victims. Okay? Yes, yes, sir. If you get around those victims, you best leave. Yes, sir. Yes, All right. Sir. And uh, and I, uh, you know, I'm kind of worried about your drug problem, but you'll be living in Abbeville, so the closest place we got for you would be Lafayette. Do they have some AA meetings in Abbeville? Yes, sir. Let's start out taking two of those for the first a week for the first six months, and then you decide. You I know. sure will, sir. Okay. I thank y'all so much. All right, Mr. Anselmi, I do concur with my colleagues. My vote today is to grant your parole with those stipulations. Now, listen, you have to take the thinking for change prior to release. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so we'll I don't know if they have it there. If they don't, we're going to do it. They do. They okay, do. So get you in, enrolled in that program. Yes, ma'am. Uh, after release, you uh, attend two AA meetings a, a week for six months, and then as, ne as you think you need to, no yes, contact. Of your victims whatsoever. Yes, ma'am. Thank y'all so much. Okay. Look, you're a second offender, but you got three crimes, and we don't want to see you again. It's ma'am, my is I'm never coming back to jail. I could promise y'all that. All right, good deal. I thank y'all so much. We're gonna sign off at 1037. Thanks, Deputy Marshawn, for accommodating us this morning. Yes, ma'am.
All right, guys, that is going to be it for this one. In the case of Brent and Selmy, inmate number 716-788 on April the 23rd of 2024, he was found suitable for parole. Uh, so what do you guys think about this one? Leave a comment below and let me know if uh, if you think Louisiana made the right decision. Do you think they made the wrong decision? And I'm very curious to read the comments on this one because he was so young when this happened. You know, he, he again, he was 17 when this happened. I think if he was uh, 19, 20, 21, this would be a completely different situation. But um, yeah, let me know what you think about the sentence. He got 14 years for this. And it seems uh, just compared to what, what we've seen from some other offenders, um, it seems like a, a very heavy sentence. So I'm not sure what happened there. But uh, nonetheless, he is out on parole now. And hopefully he's doing well. You know, his family seems very happy to uh, for him to get out. And so... Yeah, we uh, we wish him all the the best of luck, and you know, hopefully things go well for him in the future. So, if you do got, like this type of content and you want to help to support the channel, the best way that you can do that is by liking the video, commenting on the video, and subscribing to the channel. And yeah, that is all. We will see you guys on the next one.